All right, so there's a couple ways to get your inner painter on in Photoshop, and one of the ways is to take the tools like the paintbrush and paint on a blank canvas. Another way is to use the pre-existing colors and pixels and alter them, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to modify the paint that's already there in the pixel colors. So we're going to go up to filters and underneath this beautiful little menu option here is a world of artistic um, endeavors. So we have all these different kinds of filters. If you go to artistic, underneath artistic is about like 15 other pieces, um, little filters that you can use. And depending what you pick, this is palette knife neon glow, which you can't hardly see anymore, watercolor. Um, these are going to change change the look of everything. Um, you don't have to do artistic. You can do sketch and you can oh, not doing anything there. So let's just cancel right out of that. You can go through these later. Distort, under distort, you can go to ocean ripple and make it look like um, what you're seeing is underwater or through glass. Okay, so that's a pretty fun effect. Um, but I want you to know all that is there. The powerful filter I'm going to show you today is called liquify. And I may have shown you this a little bit already, but I'm going to take the brush size down to a decent size and brush density. We'll see how that goes. On the uh, left hand side are all the tools and liquify basically liquefies all the pixels into wet paint. So if you start with the tool up top it's like running your finger through wet paint. Okay and you can finger paint with all the beautiful little pixels that were just in order. I'm going to do control Z and get back out of that. To change that, my brush density is like the pressure of your finger. If it's up all the way, it's like you're digging your finger through wet paint. If it's down low, it's like you're lightly, you know, going over the paint while it's drying. Okay, and I'm going to reconstruct that. Uh, restore all, there we go. I can twirl something clockwise, pucker, or bloat. Let me use the bloat tool. And I love using the bloat tool with a pretty high density because what it does is it blows up the area like a bubble. So it acts like a three-dimensional bubbleizer. And um, wherever that, woo, we're going to blow up the whole thing and give it a three-dimensional effect. I have a really big brush there. I'm going to go to Pucker. Pucker is going to act like a black hole. So wherever the cr crossbar is, it's going to suck all the paint into that. So this is really great um, in some areas. There we have like cell mitosis <laughs> or meiosis, whatever we're calling it. Um, and this is fun to just lead the paint around almost like a zipper it'll follow okay so we're going to restore all okay so what happens if you want to save an area but you want the rest to be played with let's go to freeze and you can draw over a certain area let's say I definitely want the um, the trees to stay there but I'm going to take pucker and I'm going to play with everything else and maybe I'll take the finger painting and move it around I guess I didn't do freeze in the bottom here notice how freeze froze that stuff in place there and if I want to unfreeze it I will go to thaw <laughs> And so we'll thaw out the place that we had frozen and then you can go to turbulence or whatever you're going to do and move that around. Now, we're going to make 
what I'm saying is an abstract painting because I want you to experiment with the filters and see what's there and what's interesting to you. After this is done, you can go back to filter and you can say um, solarize or you can go back to filter and um, render and go into a lens flare. You can go into filter and distort and put a ripple into it. Okay, and basically make your own abstracted background because you're going to make this into a journal cover for your art journal. Um, so once that's done, you can take this into PicMonkey and add a label to it. 